Right, this is, uh, welcome back to Always Garage. Now, it's a quick video for Jeff, uh, Van Rocco 66. Jeff, got your video a couple of minutes ago, mate. I'm just going to show you this. Having some problems with the throttle cables on your Harley. And it's a common one. I just want to show you quick. Coming in, I'll do this. I'm just going to take this as quick as I can because I want to get it uploaded. Because being in Britain, we've got rubbish upload time. Now, you've got your two cables. If you look down here on the rotation, Yours rotates the other way. As the video you sent me, yours rotates backwards, but it makes no odds. Whichever way it opens and closes is cool. It doesn't mean that this being a Sportster rotates that way. Yours being a big twin rotates backwards. It makes no odds. Now, the two cables, quite simply, you've got a load of slack in your pull cable, your return cable. So if you look up here quick, you've got a cable that pulls the throttle on. We know about that. And you've got a, a cable that pulls and shuts the throttle physically if the spring goes. Or if you've got it wide open, sometimes the spring's not enough. So you, you've got the shut cable. If there's too much slack in that cable, the cable all the way down the, the, the inner cable, inside the outer tube, kind of sits like that, cockeyed, and it kind of rubs. You've got to get it tensioned so that it sits neatly in the slot. If it's kind of too slack, it's going to rub. So that's causing part of the problem. And you know how to adjust it. All you've got to do down here, if you sh like you showed me on your video, you've got the one cable adjusted fine. Okay, the cable on the back there that you've got that's too long, you can you can't really see it in this, but that cable in the back, come over the top. That cable in the back there that's too long on yours. All you've got to do is on here, on the return cable, loosen off the jam nut, and then undo that so it expands those two halves. As, that, as those two halves expand, it makes the outer tube longer and therefore renders the inner cable shorter by comparison. I don't want to waffle too much, but basically, make that longer, it will take out the slack and it will return you a little bit of slippage. Don't ever lubricate these, they don't need lubrication because the wire cable inside these days, they're all plastic coated. If you put oil down there, it gathers dust, that makes a gungy stuff and that sticks it worse. But just a quick one for you. The easiest way to diagnose, I think you've trapped a cable, mate. I think that's what you've done. If you have a look here, when we follow the cables down, on the Sportster, you can see them. On your bike, they go up under the tank. So you've got to, under the tank, lift it up. Make sure that here you haven't trapped the casing. Because if you put too much of a bend in the outer, that's going to cause it to jam. So the best way to do it is take off that return cable. Actually take the hammer off the end. Remove it from the throttle. And then see if it springs back. If you remove the return cable at that bottom end and it starts springing back perfectly, you know the jam cable is causing the problem. If you remove that cable and it doesn't do anything, it's still jamming open, then you know you've probably got a problem in here. This is quite common. So get a, uh, your, your Torx heads, loosen off this, which you've already done, just take it apart, and if that then springs back, you know it's jamming up in here. And when you put the new grips on, I see this with guys all the time. Here, if you come over the top, if you look in there, sometimes this on a new grip can rub against there and that could be causing it. So you've got several places you've got to look for it. There must be no friction on there. The standard one, if that wasn't jamming before you put your aftermarket grips on, then what's new, what's different, is your aftermarket grips. So you have to find out whether in changing that you've jammed something in there. And the easiest way to tell is take that return cable off of the throttle butterfly at the bottom. Once you've removed that, just have it hanging there like that. Then test it again. If when you test that again, it's springing back fine, obviously it's the cable and you need to find out if you've trapped it. If when you take it off it's no different, then it's not the return cable. So just put it back on, adjust out the slack like I said, and find it, it's probably in there, is a problem. Now that's that, that's all I can do. It's just a case of making sure it's all free. If it comes to it, you might have kinked the cable. So take the whole cable off, and with the cable in your hand, just run it in and out and make sure it's not sticking. It's just a case of eliminating every place, but very commonly you'll find, if you've pushed it on too far, even here, even the rubber on the end, can rub against the end of the steel bar, and that can cause friction, okay? So check out, eliminate that it's not trapping there, Adjust that by simply expanding that, by moving it apart, unscrewing it, that makes it tighter. Do it until the cable goes too tight and then just back it off a bit to give it some slack. That's the first half. The other thing you asked was about painting. Now yeah, I've done a lot of painting but I'm by no means a painter. Um, there's loads of guys that I watch who do painting ten times better than me. Um, all I can answer in question is, you asked about 
painted your horn cover. There's stainless steel underneath and that black coating that's on there, that is a powder coat and it's quite good but it's really hard. So what I would do, I'll just show you over here, uh, I wouldn't waste money getting it powder coated or anything like that. Just get some good old fashioned nasty, nasty ass sandpaper like that and just beat it all off. Just scuff all that black stuff off and the surface of the metal will be really gritty and really keyed up. And once that surface is really rough, then just put some nice etch primer over the top with a can and then rub that back and bodywork it like normal. It's as simple as that. It's a case of experimenting, but yes, you're right in what you surmised. You do need to scuff all that black stuff off because it's a funny powder coat. And when you start putting paint chemicals on it, it could lift, it could go nasty and you've wasted your time. So scuff all that off back to bare metal. Just do it with sandpaper, it comes off fine. So there you go. Hope that helps you, Jeff. Uh, if there's anything else you need, let me know. Take care.